there it is. My alcohol stash for guests. I'm not that much of a drinker, but this is kind of pivotal in what we're gonna talk about today. The comfort trap. Yes, the comfort trap. Why people are seeking pleasure and comfort over education and progression. Okay, <clears throat> this is another reason that people are poor video. And one of the reasons that people are poor, and I'm gonna show you something. Like, this is a case for my drone. Okay, like, there it is, right? I just got some propellers in there because I have another drone on the way. And this case is smaller. I can put the drone in here without the propellers. Now, this is the original case, which I thought I was buying when I bought that orange case. But just stick with me. I'm going somewhere with this. To stick with me. All right. So this allows me to put the drone in the case and the batteries and the controllers and all this other stuff, right? No, stick with me. I'm gonna start cooking with this. I'm gonna start cooking. Now, I had a video where I was talking about this and someone said, hey, get rid of that and get a Mavic. And if you know anything about the DJI lineup, that's their mid-sized drone. They actually have drones bigger than that. And the Mavic will literally fit in the palm of your hand. And it's like, get the Mavic, get the Mavic. Now, I'm gonna tell you, that drone has been to California, Texas, Florida, New York. I actually use it in New York and London and Los Angeles, which means that whenever I go somewhere, I got to check baggage. And when I went to London, I had that and I had a big old bag and I had a carry on. And one of the reasons that people are poor is they're seeking comfort. They're seeking pleasure. They're seeking ease of use. Now, why do I have that drone? I have that drone because it's the best drone uh, for the money that you can get. The camera quality is amazing. That's why I have that drone. And one of the things that people are going to have to start to understand is when they film a movie, they're not using the DJI Mavic. They're using the Phantom. They have another one, the Aspire, or they're using these huge drones that can actually have a camera on it like that. So there's a term that I like to use. You do what's necessary versus doing your best. And what do I mean by that? When I was normal, when I was a regular person, <clears throat> when I was out there uh, doing what I needed to do to make money, to feed my family, I was a regular person. I was doing my best, right? And my best pretty much ensured a mediocre lifestyle. That's what it was, because uh, I was living check to check, paycheck to paycheck, doing all types of financially stupid stuff, pawning stuff, pawning my DVDs, pawning my CDs, rent to own, title pawn. Any type of stupid financial mistake, I made it when I was a regular person. Because I was doing my best, I was working really, really hard. I was working really, really hard. Two, three jobs, I was doing what I need to do. And I was doing my best. And then when I started to do what was necessary, my financial life exploded. See, here's the big issue. 
A lot of you out there are just doing your best. You're not doing what's necessary. And in light of the global reset that is rolling, it is starting to roll because yesterday was Valentine's Day, right? And uh, I'm dating someone. I like her. I like her a lot. I'm not going to lie about it. So I went out and got her some Valentine's Day stuff. Got her some flowers. I went to Tiffany's. And um, I noticed that wasn't a lot of traffic out. I mean, when I got the flowers, because I got the other stuff the day before, and I got the Tiffany bracelet the day of, typically, you know, I'm a, I, like, I like Tiffany. I like their presentation. I like what they put out. And um, I noticed last time I was in Tiffany's, there was a line. I had to wait. I was in and out of Tiffany's four or five minutes. And I was able to buy two dozen roses on Valentine's Day at around 4.30 p.m. Let me say that again. I was able to buy two dozen red roses. Like if you know anything about if you 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 you, you treat your girl, you know, because like one of my things is it's like what's the point in having someone you don't want to spoil, right? And I take note of that that I was able to find this stuff on Valentine's Day. That tells me the global reset is rolling. This re impending recession, like I said, it's just February. I might be wrong. But we're going to check out the unemployment numbers for February. But right now, during this recession, and this is some of the training that I'm going to come up because uh, I'm going to do because, like I said, I was going to start it after Super Bowl uh, Sunday. And this is a really interesting thing using the Super Bowl. The Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup got seriously overlooked by a lot of colleges. He, he wasn't heavily recruited. And argumentally, he was the best wide receiver in the NFL last year. If you just, and I was watching a video that was filmed in October talking about how great Cooper Cup was. And one of the things that Cooper has been able to do, which is really hard, is he's been able to get better year after year after year. He wasn't doing his best. He was doing what was necessary. And this is uh, some of the stuff I'm gonna teach you guys because right now you've got to reframe your whole skilo because one of the biggest reasons that people are poor is they wanna do what's necessary and then they wanna kick back and pop one of those open. Um, let's take the car rental business. Um, I was working really hard because I know how to start a business. I knew what I had to do and I knew and I was working 12, 16 hour days because that was, was what was necessary to get the car business up. And I single handedly on YouTube exposed the BS of the car rental business. I did that because before I made the Kill Switch Chronicles, before I started doing things and talking about what I was doing in the car business, everything in the car business was super great. You can make all this money. It was rosy because, see, YouTubers will lie to you because they want to get the views. They're not going to tell you the ugly truth. Because I have money, I can afford to tell you the truth. And a lot of people have thanked me. They're just like, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because see, that type of critical analysis, that type of breakdown was completely absent from YouTube before I did it. You think I'm the only one with a fleet of 20, 30 cars that experienced that? No, not. I've had person after person comments talking about, man, I got the same problems and I don't even have any nice cars. I had one guy who wrote me, he's got 25 Hondas, Toyotas, and he said his experiences 
paralleled mine down to the point because at one point he said i didn't really want to get people arrested but that was the only way i get my car back and he's like i got gps kill switches they get around them he wrote me this five paragraph email and he said man you know I, I really thought about giving up this business several times, but I keep seeing all this stuff on YouTube, how good the car rental business is. And I, and I was like, I felt I was missing something, but when you broke it down and you showed and you exposed, he said, he, he's, he's shutting it down. He says, I, I just, I'm shutting it down. I can't deal with it anymore because one of the things, and th this, this, this is very, 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 very important. When you transcend your mindset from doing your best, because, you know, I used to be a regular person. I know that when you get up every day, you brush your teeth, take a shower and you go to work, you do your best and you come home. You feel that you should get more remuneration from that. You feel that you should get more rewards from that. But here's the thing, you're not doing anything extraordinary. And that's why you're getting the results that you're getting. That's why you're getting the results that you're getting. You're not doing anything extraordinary. You're doing something very pedestrian. And this is something that people don't understand because once I understood what it took to start a business, that number one, in the beginning, Let's go ahead and have this conversation. There's no work-life balance. I have seen YouTuber, I've seen TikTokers, I've seen podcasters talk about how you can start a business, scale it up, and have a life. I've seen so many people get around that. And once you get the mindset that, look, I'm starting this business, and it's gonna suck for about two, three years. Once you embrace that, once you embrace that, that's when you can become great. Once you embrace that, because you want to know why? Everyone is running away from that. Everyone's running away from the hard work. Like, thing with this drones. There are whole YouTube channels devoted to packing. So you don't have to check luggage. So you can have all of your stuff in your carry-on and you can go on, there, there are YouTube channels devoted to packing because people won't want to take an additional 15 or 30 minutes to get retrieve their, their baggage from check bags. And this is something else I've seen. I used to travel quite a bit and I've noticed that a lot of wealthy people check bags. A lot of wealthy people, a lot of poor people check bags. But I've noticed that. You've got, like I said, you got whole YouTube channels devoted to how to pack your bag so you don't have to. And th this is one of the things. If these people were highly productive, I could kind of see that I can kind of see that but these people are going through all of these gyrations to save 15 minutes so they can get to the hotel and chill a little bit so they can sit down it's not like they're trying to save time to be more productive they're trying to save time so they can sit on their ass That's why people are poor. Because they're chasing comfort. They're chasing entertainment over education. There are a number of YouTube channels that are good. They give you good information. They teach you things. They don't have the views. I found this one guy who was giving some dope business information you know how many views his best video has? And he's been at it been two years. 500 views. That's his best video. 500 views. His presentation is good. He has professional equipment. 
his audio is on point. And I'm sitting there like, why doesn't this guy have more views? And it's like, I watch him because I like being educated. I like being informed. I like being schooled. But most folks don't like that because they're trying to sit down. Once again, if all of these productivity hacks led to you working harder and putting that extra time towards something of value, I, I could understand that, but that's, that's, that's not what happened. That's not what happening, man. So this is a big, big reason that people are poor or average. And let's talk about average. Um, I put up a video on Disruptive Mail talking about why I don't watch Kevin Samuels. And I had a lot of people come at me and you know, some people's like, I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. And I'm gonna tell you something. To write an ad on Craigslist and to have a beautiful woman come to your house and fuck you is not average. It's not normal. It's highly atypical, atypical. I had people in London, because I checked, stealing my ads from Atlanta. I had people in Las Vegas, and I had people in California stealing my ads. So, once again, I have no beef with Kevin Samuels, and I'm not gonna do any more videos about Kevin Samuels, but since I was doing above average stuff, I got above average results. Because the first time it happened, the second time, the third time, and, and there's a lot of people who want to kind of piss on that. I'm gonna tell you a little story. Lay Paris, you're gonna love this. I met not one, not two, not, but three trust fund babies on Craigslist. When I dated, you know, this chick was worth about 15 million. She took me to South America. She took me to Paris. She took me to the Bahamas. She took me to London. And it was like this, hey, it's like, what's up? She's like, you wanna go to Paris? It's like, sure. And she says, I so love you. You have a passport and you actually have the time to travel. And she get the tickets. It was never a thing about her paying for me to a copy, a copy, a copy, a copy her, copy, to a copy her. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. To go with her to these places. She always paid, had no problem blowing that bread on me. That's the kind of chicks that I met on the Craigslist protocol. I got a question. How many of you have dated a rich woman that had no problem spoiling you? Put that in the comments. I've had that experience. I know what it's like to wake up in a five-star hotel in Paris with a beautiful woman next to me on a trip that she, I know what that feels like. Put that in the comments. If you have dated a rich woman that had no problem spoiling you, how normal is that? Because I was doing what was necessary because just like when I was writing, because the Craigslist protocols uh, came from my Craigslist advertising system, which took me a few months to work out, test, put stuff up, and I had to tweak it for the dating site. This wasn't average stuff. This wasn't normal stuff. Kevin Samuels has never ridden an ad and had a woman come to his house and fuck him. You wanna know how I can say that with 100% certainty? Cause Kevin Samuels has never talked about writing. I got my early videos, I have written books. I've written multiple books. You can go to amazon.com today, put in Glendon Cameron, and boom, my books pop up. Kevin Samuels doesn't know how to write. 
He doesn't talk about it because that's not his, his purview. So I can say with a complete and 100% confidence that Kevin Samuels never wrote an ad. And also, you know, I took the Craigslist protocol and I put them on dating websites and I had the same results. I took, you know, I could do it on Plenty of Fish. I had to adopt and trunicate my ads for Bumble. But same results. I was meeting women and fucking them the first night. So, and because I talk about it, and once again, shout out to all of the people who love Disruptive Mail, the original viewers, you guys understand. And for all of the moist haters who's like, well, you know, the Craigslist protocols, they ain't in the same conversation. Let me say something. Let me say something. Let me get something off my chest. If you're a heterosexual man, you wanna fuck. It is normal, it is healthy, it is your biological imper imperative. And anything that goes against that is total and utter bullshit. If you are a heterosexual man, you like fucking. And there ain't nothing wrong with it. All of this stuff, like, I, I had some weak little female. Well, you talking about fucking like a teenager. Teenagers be writing ass and get women to come. No, they don't. I talk about fucking on a very high level. Very high level. But once again, when you do what is necessary, I wrote the ads and it took me a few months putting them up, not working, putting them up, not working, putting them up, working. And I kept working at it, I kept working at it, and I kept working at it until I started to yield the results that I wanted because I did what was necessary. I didn't do my best because doing your best is a cop out. In these United States of America, and I'm gonna be careful here, I'm gonna be careful. You can get rich. It's not as easy as I originally thought for the average person who's growing up in a resource deficient environment, but for people who are willing to do what is necessary, getting rich, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some benchmarks. I'm not gonna talk about this in abstract. $250,000 a year in most cities outside of California and New York, you're pretty rich. You can, and I'm gonna tell you why you're rich. You can buy whatever car you want. You can buy a million dollar house if your credit is on point. And you can invest 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 dollars a year. So 250, 70, 80 is gonna go for taxes. That's gonna leave you 180. You can live on 80, you can live on 100, invest 80. $100,000 is like almost 9,000 a month. I can live the lifestyle that I am currently living easily on 250, easily. And this is one of the reasons that so many people are perpetrating the fraud on the internet because they make six figures and they have good credit, which enables them to present an image that looks much better than it really is. I am one of the few YouTubers or influencers that has a paid off Porsche. I'm one of the few. Most of these guys are have two and $3,000 car payments. And I'm gonna tell you something on, on that. My next Porsche, I'm gonna finance. You wanna know why? Because I'm gonna be able to write those payments off on my taxes. I'm gonna finance this car. I'm gonna finance it in my name and assign it to my YouTube company and you, you know, and I'll be able to take those deductions. That would be the only way that I would finance a car. Only way I would finance a car. So, also, I don't know. Because uh, we're going to take a little departure here. You might see my girlfriend on the YouTube channel. You might. Because she knows about all of the brouhaha and all the bull. And she's like, that was just crazy. 
You know, she's intelligent. She's smart. She's, a, she's in STEM. She's in school. She graduates this year. She's getting a STEM degree. Y'all might see her. And then y'all might not. I haven't decided because I'm making a whole bunch of decisions right now. I'm just thinking about stuff. But back to this regularly scheduled programming. Um, once you get it in your mind that you can do what is necessary versus doing your best, you will start to see extraordinary results. You will start to see a big change in your life. Once you get away from seeking pleasure and comfort and start to excel, like I have now 50 credit cards. They ain't normal. They ain't normal. You know, the play on that is to take those 50 personal credit cards and leverage them. Like I've got one business credit card that's 50% utilized. I will never ever do that on any of my personal accounts. No. I treat my personal accounts like debit cards. And uh, seriously, I just, I got one that I just pay off. I looked at the statement, I paid that card off eight times. I don't wait, cause I got enough credit, but I just like, I just have it mentally in my mind that when I use it, I need to pay for it versus carrying a balance. Now my business credit cards, I don't really give a damn because you know it doesn't report to my credit it doesn't drop my FICO and I pay that once a month but I am getting ready to start spending some more money to improve everything and once again let's talk about the new training that's going to start the first of March because I want to be thoughtful and I want to be considerate and as I make this video we're going to talk about doing what's necessary versus doing your best that is a huge, huge reason that people are poor. And once again, these people are not stupid. They're not dumb. They are uneducated. They don't really understand, just like I was years and years ago, just like I was, I didn't know what it took to be rich. And then once I started to figure it out and I had help, I had a lot of help because my, the biggest thing that helped me was working with people who were already rich being exposed to that and being exposed to different conversations being exposed to different mindsets that helped me like uh, i told this story before but uh, the owner of business environments he was married his wife got a paycheck and you know he you know why he did this this man paid this woman 75 his wife paid her seventy five thousand dollars a year and you know he said if we ever get divorced she can't say she doesn't have an income so he was being prophylactic, and it was like, there, there, there've been so many people in the moist man, well, you paying their $75,000 a year, you just keep that money in buy it, man. Y'all ready a husband? You didn't understand the game. See, and th this is something else I'm gonna be talking about. To be the boss, you gotta pay the cost. Being a boss requires you to make payments. Like, my next wife, if I meet her and she has student loan debt, guess what? I'm gonna pay off her student loan debt. Buy a car, get her a nice ring. Not gonna have a big wedding, I'm not into that. We will have a wedding and uh, she will come into the marriage with no debt. No debt. Now that sounds to the big toe and the red pills is like, ay, 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 yo, what, what, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You should no cohabitation. Shouldn't get married. No, 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 no. And you guys don't want to pay the cost to be the boss because you're scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared to spoil my woman. I'm not scared to spend money on my woman. And once again, this is coming from a guy who have fucked a few hundred, I don't know, 700 women. No attachments, no dinner dates. Just come over to my house and take that dick. Now I'm older and once again, I've talked about this. While I can still pull, because I'm a realist, 10 years from today, I'm gonna to be 65 years old. 
I don't care how good you look. I don't care how many push-ups and stuff you can do in the park. 65 is old. It's old. And that is my future. And I need to get my nuts, get my stuff now versus waiting till I'm 65 old and decrepit and out here trying to get me a sugar baby to come over and spend a little time with me. I don't want no sugar baby. I want a wife. I want someone who's going to wake up and cook breakfast. I want someone who I can sit and watch television with. I want someone that I can go shopping with. I want someone that I can travel with. And I am working on me because, I mean, there are times like, true story. I could have seven women that are kind of in orbit. And there was a Friday night and I deliberately stayed home by myself to change my ski load. And there was one, and I'm gonna I'm 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 actually, I had to get my girlfriend back because we broke up. She got mad. I did some in October. I started working on it. We broke up October. I started working back on it December, January. It took me two months to get her back. Because out of all the chicks that I spent time with, she was the most comfortable. And that hooker body doesn't hurt. Oh my God, it doesn't hurt. Don't, don't hurt, don't hurt. So I had to get her back. True story. So one of the things, cause uh, I'm, like I said, I'm getting long in the tooth. And I don't wanna be some 65 year old dude on the Sugar Baby website looking for some young thing to come spend a little time. I don't want that. And I know that if I don't make adjustments in me, like this happened. We were in bed last night and she, cause she likes my phone cause it's bigger. And I just gave her my phone. You wanna know why I, I, I could give her my phone? Cause my phone wasn't like, at one point there had been no way. <laughs> there had been no way I would've gave her my phone cause it would've been like, boom, boom, boom. My phone would've been blowing up. I've been getting dirty texts and all this other stuff. Because I have changed and I have fired the team, my phone wasn't blowing up. So I could give her my phone and she could look at stuff and there was, there was nothing in my phone. I would have never done that before. But once again, we're building a bond. We're building a relationship. And part of building that bond and relationship is trust. And I guarantee you that she took note of that because she, she's very smart and she's like, oh, he gave me his phone. Because I, I don't have nothing, I, I, I really stopped all of that tomfoolery. I stopped all of that foolishness because, whew, man, I don't want to be 65 and be alone. Just don't. But once again, I got to do what's necessary to get what I want. And, you know, yeah, there are some women that you can be kinky and they don't mind you fucking other women, but the average woman that you want to have is pretty much not going for that. Just not going for that. So we're going to get into the training and this is, this is a good, good theme. We're going to do what is necessary versus doing our best. And we're going to stop seeking comfort. Uh, I want to teach you guys and you're going to start your businesses in the next two to three years. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy because you're going to keep your job. You're going to keep your job and you're going to keep working and you're going to keep doing what you need to do. You're going to keep your job and you're going to work very, very hard. So once I get all that together, I will let you guys know I'm going to drop that March 1st, 1st of March. I need to get the website and get everything together. I'm working on that because I'm consistently thinking about it. 
So tell me what you think about this presentation today. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you guys in the next one.